So the next step to getting our low poly terrain back into Unity is to do some UV mapping and generate some textures. So I'm going to open up a second window, slide that over. I'm going to ch change the type to the UV image editor. Okay. Now, it depends a little bit on the size of your terrain and what you're trying to do. Um, for a large terrain like this, I think this one is uh, roughly two kilometers by two kilometers, we're going to want to have fairly large textures and we're going to want to have a couple of them so that we get good detail. Before we get to that, let me also show you how I've set up my lighting. Here I have on another layer, I have some lights. Oh, and they're blocked a little bit by my train. Let me hide my train, zoom in. So what I've got here is two lights. I've got one up, one down. And they're just lamps, um, sun lamps. The one going down is set to full strength. The one going up is turned down considerably. And I use this as a default. Uh, for the terrain, this probably won't matter. But if I'm doing trees or other objects, I want a little bit of light coming up from underneath so the shadows aren't too dark. Um, I have shadows turned off on both of them. And in uh, my global settings or world settings, I have my ambient occlusion on, environmental lighting on, and indirect lighting. Um, I've also chosen my ambient occlusion to be multiply rather than the default add. Uh, I find that the add makes things uh, generally too bright for my tastes. And these are just kind of the default settings that I have in my startup scene. Um, you'll have to adjust these to your own tastes. So let me get my terrain back. So what I'm going to do, get a top-down view just so we can see what's going on. What I'm going to do is get a texture for the hills, the brown part, a texture for the green part, and a texture for the sand. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go into edit mode, go to my materials tab, and I'm going to make sure that I had unselected everything. So the first one I'm going to do is sand. And I'm going to select, and that's just going to select just the vertices that are sand colored. You can see over here in my image um, view, I've done that as well. Now the next step takes some time, so I'm going to edit the timeout. But I'm going to go to Mesh, UV Unwrap, and I'm going to use a light map pack. And the reason I like this one is that it takes every triangle and separates it, so it's not connected to other triangles. This prevents any bleeding of the colors. Um, I'm going to do a new image. I'm going to set this image size up quite a bit. I'm going to go 4096. Okay. Um, your pack quality here, if you turn that up, uh, the time that this takes goes up considerably. Um, but this is basically how much of the texture gets used or how um, carefully the computer avoids leaving blank spaces. For terrains, 12, maybe 20 is okay. It maxes out at 48. If you do a smaller model, you can definitely go up. The margin, this is how much space is left between um, vertices um, or polygons. The default's usually pretty good. Every once in a while, I got to nudge that up to 0.11 or 0.12. So I'm going to push OK. This is going to take a couple minutes. Um, so I'll edit that out and come back when it's done. OK, so that first UV, on, uh, UV mapping is done. Um, that took my desktop about 10 or 15 minutes to do. So if you're doing this on a laptop or a lower powered machine, just be aware, it takes a while. Um, and what you can see over here now is that all these, if I zoom in, you can see all the polygons have unwrapped and there's a nice space between them. Okay, the bigger ones are there, um, the detail. So the next thing we need to do now that we've unwrapped it is actually bake this texture onto it. So I'm gonna go over to my camera tab, come all the way down here to bake, open up the bake and there's two options here that you can do, and um, kind of depends on what you're trying to do. You can do a full render, uh, which will bake the color as well as the lighting and the ambient occlusion. Um, another thing that I think is useful is you can just bake just the ambient occlusion. What this will allow us to do is then um, bring in this texture so we have the nice shading from Blender, um, but use the tinting feature in the Unity materials to change our color once we're in game. Um, and I think for a terrain, getting the colors just right, um, this is a nice way to do it, considering how long these bakes take. So I, I'm gonna choose just ambient inclusion. Um, and I'll bake that. And this doesn't take too, too long. Uh, you can see the uh, progress bar up here at the top.
and there we go, we're all done. Now if I unselect these vertices uh, and then look at my texture, you can zoom in and you can see that I don't have a uniform color. Looks like I, for some reason, have baked the... Uh... Oh, I know what I did, yep. You can see that I don't have a uniform color. But you'll notice that I do have color to this, which isn't necessarily what I want. That's not gonna allow me to tint that. So let's go back uh, and rebake that one more time. So I'm gonna select my sand again. Again, it's pretty quick and easy. Go back to bake. And I'm gonna keep it on ambient occlusion, but what I'm gonna do is choose normalized. And I'm gonna press bake. Okay, now again, if I unselect those vertices and zoom in, you can see everything is uh, grayscale. And this will allow us to tint the, the uh, mesh once we get into Unity. So that was one of the materials, um, or one of the colors. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the other materials, my grass and my sand. So I'm gonna select my grass, select, go to mesh, UV unwrap, light map pack. And that took a long time, so I'm gonna turn down my quality down to 12. Um, and I'll come back once I have the uh, grass and the hills unwrapped. Okay, I've now managed to unwrap and bake each of the textures. You can see I have three light maps here. Uh, the next step here is we need to save these as an image. Save as image. And I'm gonna keep just dropping these on my desktop. This first one was sand. Save as a PNG. Second one was our grass. And finally, the last one, these were our hills. So now that we've got our model completely UV unwrapped, and we've got the textures baked, we're gonna do a couple things to help optimize our uh, terrain here. Unity can only deal with um, meshes that are so big. It's also not great to have so many vertices showing at all times. Uh, this mesh, as you can see here, is almost 200,000 faces, um, which is a lot. So we're gonna go in and do some quick and easy, quick and dirty uh, uh, splitting up of this model. So I'm gonna go back into edit mode and I'm gonna use my box select tool. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split this up into chunks. I'm gonna highlight that part. I'm gonna hit spacebar, type separate. I'm gonna separate by selection. It's gonna break that up into a different chunk. And I'm gonna do the same thing down here, roughly breaking it into thirds. Again, spacebar for separate, selection, okay. And now I've got this third here. And I'm gonna break this up into, these little chunks up into thirds. So just to be organized, I'm gonna start here at the bottom, go into edit mode. I'm gonna break it up into thirds. I'll fast forward this so you don't have to watch the whole process. Okay, now what I have, if I select this, I have my terrain broken up into a grid of, of nine squares. For your game, you might wanna do more, you might wanna do less, you might wanna be more careful with where your seams are. But this will allow us to use some occlusion culling, which I'll show in a later video. So I'm going to, again, select just on my terrain. I'm gonna go up to File, Export, and I can choose the FBX option. Down here, I'm gonna choose the select selected objects option. So I'm only gonna export what I've selected. And I'm gonna only export the mesh. This just prevents me from having to save a camera, a lamp or anything like that and having extra empty game objects go into Unity. I'm gonna save this as Terrain Tor Tutorial 2, which I've already done once, so I already have a file. And I'm gonna press export. Now I'm gonna go back into Unity and I'm gonna import this asset. Import new. So I'm gonna to go to my project, right click, import new asset, go down and find the FBX. Make sure you get the FBX, not the OBJ file, the FBX file. Import this. It's gonna take a minute. 
and I'm going to drag my terrain out like that. You can see it looks like Unity's done some other clipping for it or some other uh, trimming for us. Looks like our terrain was a little too big. You can see these strips that it's put in. So if I was making this for a uh, game that I was going to ship and publish, I'd probably go back in and uh, break my terrain up into smaller parts or use my decimation uh, modifier to drop my poly count a little bit more. Unity just has a maximum number of vertices that it can deal with um, per mesh. Um, if I look at my hierarchy here, you can see all the pieces that have been broken up. And when Unity did it, um, it creates an empty parent and then sticks the uh, two children objects in there. Okay. So what I've got, if I zoom in here, um, I've got a nice low poly terrain. Okay. Um, we've avoided all those uniform sh uh, shaped and sized polygons that I don't like. If you do zoom in here, you can see one of the errors that I addressed in another uh, in an earlier video. You can see some of these slicings going on, um, and that came from our decimate modifier. Um, my scale's a little out of whack here. You can see them kind of all over the place. Um, and I haven't figured out an easy way to deal with that other than one-on-one -on -one like I showed in the earlier video. Um, somebody knows of a quicker way of getting rid of those small, really skinny uh, polygons, uh, please leave a comment. So uh, next step we want to do here um, is we're going to bring in our textures that we created earlier. So I'm going to import those, import new asset, and I just dropped those onto my desktop. So I'm going to bring in my sand first, bring in my grass, and then I'm going to bring in my hills. You know what, I'm not taking the time to stick these into separate folders. I do that when I build my build a game, uh, but for the sake of the tutorial, I'm skipping that step. So what we want to do is select one of our uh, terrain mesh objects. And uh, we've got a grass in our sand. This one doesn't have the hills because that object doesn't have the, any uh, hill hills in it. So we're going to open up this material. and. I'm open up my sand. I'm going to take my sand texture and drop it into the albedo channel. And you'll notice as soon as I do that, I got a little bit of shading going on. Okay, I can delete that, and you can see this subtle shading kicks in. The other thing I'm going to do is this smoothness. This is the shininess. Um, I'm going to turn that all the way down because I just don't like it. And that's just the way I am. If you like it, leave it on. Uh, and we go up to the grass and do the same thing. Drop this grass in. And I'm going to turn the sh shininess all the way down. I'm going to go grab a chunk that's got the uh, hills in it. You'll notice that since the, the grass is um, the same shader, it's already been dealt with, or the same material, rather. I'm going to grab the hills, throw that in the albedo, and turn down the smoothness. And now what I've got is, other than some... Uh, cleanup that I need to do in Blender. I've got a pre pretty decent looking low poly terrain. Okay, now if we want to walk around on this, because that's kind of fun, um, let's go to our hierarchy and we're going to select all of our mesh objects. And then we're going to add Mesh Collider. Once we've added that Mesh Collider, let's drop in a first person controller. I've just got my standard asset. I'm going to drop in my first person controller and drop it in there. I'm going to zoom in, just lift it up so we're not falling to the ground, uh, and push play. Let's see what we got. And there you go. Got some pretty decent looking hills, pretty decent looking terrain. Let's see if I can do a little bit of wall jumping to go up this thing. There you go, I can see my terrain. Now it certainly needs some loving, needs some tidying up. Um, you can see these uh, like right in front here, there's this very small, narrow polygon. I tend not to like those. 
I'll go into Blender and fix those. You can see uh, straight ahead, uh, there's a very dark spot there in the grass. That's another one. Uh, and those, unfortunately, as far as I know, have to be edited out hand by um, one by one by hand. Next video, I'll show you how to do the uh, Bake the Occlusion Colon. It's pretty straightforward, and I'll show you the results of that.